individuals who commit sins do not feel guilty. Instead, they actually are guilty. Here's what Tim Challies wrote. Guilt is the objective reality that I have committed an offense or a crime. You and I have a tendency to say things like, oh, I just feel so guilty. That's wrong language. You don't feel guilty. You are guilty. It's not a feeling. It is an objective declaration of what you are. You cannot feel guilt. You simply are guilty, uh, Tim Challies wrote. Shame, on the other hand, is the subjective experience of feeling humiliation or distress because of what I have done. Uh, you and I commit sins, so we are guilty. And the consequence, the result of that, is that we feel shame. Understanding the difference between the two is imperative if you no longer want to feel like you are still in a pigsty. Our Canadian wrote, Guilt and shame come in helpful forms and in paralyzingly unhelpful forms. Guilt and shame can be a good gift of God or a curse of Satan. It is so important that we use biblical language, precise language, to understand exactly what is going on inside of our hearts. When we recognize that guilt is not a feeling, it is actually a sentence. It is actually a description of what you objectively are as defined by God himself. A criminal, a lawbreaker, an evil person. And you go, oh, that's really heavy. Well, that's what we are. But the good news is, once the Bible, once the Word of God, the sword, the two-edged sword that cuts through us, opens us up, reveals our black heart, never leaves us bleeding on the operation table, now it comes along with gospel balm and it begins to heal us. Here is the reality. This is what is real. This is not a feeling. This is fact. You and I are guilty. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, died for you and me, the guilty criminals. He became sin who knew no sin, that we might become the righteousness of God. When you and I repent, put our trust in him for that forgiveness of sins, guess what the Bible says? You are not guilty anymore. Now, here's where the good news comes in. If you're a guilty criminal who is no longer guilty anymore, if it was your guilt that caused you to feel shame, and that guilt is now gone, what should be the status of your shame? Tim Challies wrote this, because the guilt of the offense is gone, the shame is gone as well. Because that sin is no longer my own, the shame is no longer my own. Here is reality number one. If your guilt has been forgiven by Jesus Christ, if that reality exists, then the reality that your shame is gone should exist also. So here's my question for you. Do you still feel shameful? Because if you are in Christ and the guilt which causes the feeling of shame has been taken care of, then the shame should be gone too. Back to the Canadian. The sin is no longer my own, which means the guilt is no longer my own, which means the shame is no longer my own. The guilt and the shame of that sin now belong to Christ. May I ask you, my friend, do you still feel shame? Then you need to speak fact to your feelings. You need to start telling yourself, not in a mind over matter kind of way, but in a reality applied to my emotions kind of way, if you are in Christ, you are not guilty anymore. And that means your shame should not exist anymore either.